Welcome, welcome. Today is all about metronidazole. Metronidazole, flagyl, they mean the same thing. And I guarantee you at some point in your life, your will experience diarrhea. Maybe they've already had a dose of metronidazole or been on treatment for it. Or maybe your dog even has inflammatory bowel disease and is constantly on medication. We are going to be talking about is metronidazole safe? Is it toxic? What exactly is it? Why are we using it? What could be possible side effects? And we're going to be covering some studies about how it may be impacting your pet's gut health. And most importantly, I'm going to give you some tips and tools how to use some fresh food, herbs, nutraceuticals, and supplements that may even work better than metronidazole for that diarrhea. So if you're new here, welcome. If you're returning, welcome back. I'm Dr. Katie Woodley, holistic veterinarian and founder of The Natural Pet Doctor. I'm on a mission to make sure that you, as the amazing pet parent that you are, feel empowered, supported, and confident that there are natural remedies and foods that we can use to help heal your pets and most importantly, prevent disease from even happening in the first place. So if you're as excited as I am to talk about this probably the most common drug that's used for pets, especially when you go to the ER or the vet for upset stomachs, diarrhea. And once again, it will happen to every single pet parent here. Diarrhea will happen. It's just like people, right? Now, the thing is, is we don't always need medications, but let's talk about the one that's going to be most likely recommended by your veterinarian. So what exactly is metronidazole. Well, let, let's do a poll first with all the people here watching. If you're watching live or you're watching the replay later, have you ever used metronidazole for your pets, your dog, your cat? It's also called flagyl. Um, and it's definitely, okay, Roxanne, thanks for sharing. Um, and it's definitely a lot of pet parents have used this medication. Um, and so it's important to be aware of what it is and the potential side effects. And I can see a lot of people here are already aware of the potential, some of the dangers that might come with this common medication. So it is an antibiotic. And here's the thing. It is a antibiotic, but it also is an anti-protozoal drug. So it's going to work against, well, okay, it, it's used, let me rephrase, it's used to treat giardia and other like protozoal infections. So commonly, like let's say your dog, like we're in Colorado, giardia is a huge issue and you know, a dog has diarrhea, they go in, there's a stool test done and they see Giardia cysts. A lot of times that vet will reach for metronidazole. We're going to talk about why it doesn't work so well in a little bit, but that's generally what it's used for. So diarrhea, it helps with clostridial overgrowths. It's an anaerobic it targets anaerobic bacteria. So the type of bacteria that like to live in an environment where there's not a lot of oxygen. So it also works for, or it'll be used for osteomyelitis in the mouth. So I've, I've had some comments like, oh, my cat's stomatitis cleared up with metronidazole. So it's targeting certain types of bacteria. And this is why it's become kind of the go-to for diarrhea since it seems to clear it up pretty quickly. Now, it also, what it does is it suppresses DNA enzymes that encourages like parasites to multiply and it can inhibit the bacteria. That's how it kills it. It's bactericidal. So it actually kills it pretty quickly. We don't have to wait like some of the other antibiotics where they work a little bit different and it can take a little bit longer for us to see results. Now, here's the thing that's fascinating with this drug because it's a lot of times given out like candy. It's actually not FDA approved for animals. So we're technically using it off label. Now it doesn't mean that your vet can't make that decision and use it appropriately, but I found that interesting that it's still not approved by the FDA for use in animals. Um, and you know, it's just that historical effectiveness against like Giardia and that C. diff clostridial infections that it continues to be used. And if you've ever used it yourself, you'll notice that it tends to work pretty quickly. And so of course, when you're like super worried, your dog is having bloody diarrhea, it's also used a lot of times in cats. So yep, IBD, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, your Giardia, it seems like it works quickly. Now Giardia, not so much, but 
it's like, okay, well that works. So let's keep using it. Now the hard, the, the, the problem with this, right, with a lot of antibiotics is it's not just targeting the C. diff. It's not just targeting the bad bacteria. There can be side effects. And this is what we're going to talk about next, because these side effects are really important to be aware of. You know, you'll hear from, you know, it with the amount it's used. Yes, I would agree that it tends to be a safe drug. We're not seeing a lot of side effects from pets, but when those side effects affect your pet, that's what matters, right? And if there's other alternatives that are much safer and actually do what we need them to do without wiping out all the good bacteria in the gut and that microbiome, I much rather use that. That's what I use for my patients. That's what I use for my own pets. I don't need to reach for metronidazole because there's a lot of really effective herbs that aren't going to wipe out all the good bacteria. And we know that microbiome is very important for the immune health, the overall health, especially if your pet has inflammatory bowel disease or an autoimmune disease of any sorts, or they're battling chronic health conditions like allergies, we need to protect that microbiome and we need to protect that immune system. So when we start using this drug, what are some of the side effects that we need to be aware of? It's pretty bitter tasting. It does not taste good. And so when we give it, a lot of times what you'll see is that you'll see excessive salivation. You'll see like drooling. They're like gagging. They're frothing at the mouth. And that doesn't mean that they're having, you know, it's toxic to them. It just tastes really bitter and it doesn't taste good. And so a lot of times if you're giving this drug, keep in mind, I'm going to give you alternatives for this. A lot of times you can actually have it, uh, made up at the pharmacy where it actually tastes good. So you could always ask for that. Once again, I'm going to go with the extreme side of using alternative options and natural options. So the other thing too is we're using this, keep in mind what we're using this for. A lot of times we're using it for diarrhea, GI upset, IBD, um, you know, Giardia where we're seeing diarrhea because of the Giardia, that protozoal infection. It can also cause though nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. So how do we know if it's a side effect from the drug or if the infection isn't going away? And that's the hard part with a lot of these medications is that the side effects are the same as the symptom that we're treating. So this is also the downside with conventional medicine. Yes, there's a time and a place that we need to use these drugs. And we always want to look at how, what is the quality of our life and things like that. But if we have alternatives that we can use that are going to heal the root and balance first, I choose those 100% of the time. The other things that it can cause are weakness. It can cause liver issues or what we call hepatopathies. So if your pet already has elevated liver values, uh, cirrhosis or dealing with like liver cancer, we do not want to use this medication. The other big one, that's the scary one. And Usually it's at higher dosages, but I've seen this in my previous years in practice with the use of metronidazole is that because it crosses the blood brain barrier, it can cause nervous system issues. So this is where we see nystagmus, where the eyes are, you know, going back and forth. Um, we'll see head tilts. We'll see loss of balance. We can even see seizures. And it's because it crosses that blood brain barrier it can affect the nervous system usually it's at high doses. But if your pet already has, you know, a lot of these older senior dogs will get vestibular disease. And if we're already having nervous system issues or other health issues, we want to avoid this drug if possible. Now, the thing is too, I mentioned it, it doesn't just take out the bad bacteria. So the problem is, is that, okay, we have this whole list of side effects let's go to some of the studies that are out there to show how effective is this medication. So in addition to like all these side effects, right, I just listed from seizures to nausea to the diarrhea that we're trying to treat, we know that metronidazole can actually cause those unhealthy gut changes in the long term. So we know it's going to wipe out the, the bacteria, like regardless, it's just going to take it all out. It's really good at doing that. And we have studies that actually show us that now. So in 2020, we actually have a study from the Journal of Veterinary Internal Medicine 
what they did is they took 24 healthy dogs. So they didn't actually have any GI symptoms like vomiting or diarrhea. They were healthy. They were not displaying any symptoms. And they gave them 14 days worth of metronidazole. And they did this alone. So they got only metronidazole or they did it in combination with a hydrolyzed diet, which I don't agree with anyways, because of the poor quality ingredients. Um, so a lot of pets who are, you know, have IBD or have allergies um, will be on or prescribed these prescription type diets. So they wanted to see like, if we combine that with this hydrolyzed diet, what happens to that microbiome? They also had a group with like nothing to see, you know, as to compare the results of that. And what they found is that metronidazole significantly changed the microbiome. So the microbiome is those trillions of different types of bacteria, protozoa, fungi, that should be all working together to break down food, to help produce hormones, neurotransmitters, anti-inflammatory mediators. They should be doing a lot of things. So, and they're closely connected with 70% of the immune system very important that we're protecting that microbiome. So we found that that metronidazole significantly changed the microbiome composition in the two groups receiving the food plus the drug and the drug alone. And the other thing too, is that they also, so they extended the study out for four weeks. They noted that a key bacteria, so fusobacteria, very essential for dog gut health and that microbiome did not even fully recover at four weeks after the drugs were discontinued. So not only are we wiping everything out, but what's happening is, is that now we have long lasting issues. So whenever I see a patient that's having chronic gut health issues, I'm like, okay, you know, you might've had metronidazole or other antibiotics, maybe like a couple years ago. I would be wanting to know what's going on in that microbiome because we need to see if we still have what's called that dysbiosis, where we have overgrowth of bad bacteria, we might be lacking diversity in that gut health. And that's really important because if you're battling chronic health conditions like itchiness, vomiting, acid reflux, anal gland issues, chewing at the paws, chronic ear infections, those are just a few. Any health condition, especially if it's chronic, we need to look to the gut. We need to look at the microbiome. And even if you haven't given something recently, we could still have those long lasting effects. And these studies are showing that, us that. So this could be why you're stuck on like that treadmill going back and forth to the vet, not being able to figure out what's going on. Um, we need to do some of those testing. Animal biome is a great one that you can use. I've talked about them in previous, you know, coffee talks and on our YouTube channel, Dr. Katie Woodley, the natural pet doctor. So you can go and rewatch those um, and see like, okay, let's make sure these are okay. Like our gut is okay. Now, I don't want to be all doom and gloom. So if you're like, because I know a lot of pets have had this medication in their past or they may currently be on it. And this is where there are definitely things that we can do to improve the outcome. So kind of reduce the risks of the gut being impacted by this medication and the harm that it can create. So there's certain probiotics and there's a lot of studies on this. So this is all coming from research articles where there's certain types of probiotics that can help support better outcomes. They can reduce side effects. So they did a study with shelter dogs with diarrhea. So keep in mind those five pillars I talk about. If you're new here, I talk a lot about fi foundations, finding the root imbalance. Whenever we have gut health issues, we always have to be thinking about what is going on with the emotional health pillar also. Because of that gut-brain connection through the vagus nerve, we know that stress alone can create leaky gut and vice versa. We can create brain on fire if we have dysbiosis and it can go back and forth. So think about shelter dogs, shelter cats. They've done studies with shelter cats too, looking at um, a similar strain of this probiotic. There's going to be a big emotional health 
like area that we need to focus on too, right? So we don't just want to use a supplement like a probiotic and miss like, oh, well, it was the stress that created the gut health issues. So keep that in mind for your own pets. I know shelters are maybe limited financially being able to add in some of these supplements. There's a lot of great shelters though um, that are working on like environmental enrichment, especially for cats, um, which is fantastic. Because if we don't treat that area, we end up with other symptoms that are resulting because that imbalance, okay? So they took a combination of a probiotic and Pterococcus Fecium SF68. So a specific strain of that type of probiotic and metronidazole. So they looked at the two and they found that that specific probiotic led to better overall results than metronidazole by itself. So, okay, great. Interesting. What does that mean? That means if we're giving probiotics first, we may be able to clear up the diarrhea and not even need an antibiotic that's going to wipe out the microbiome. Okay, great. Here's another one. What's really neat about this. So if your pet is on metronidazole and you're concerned about stopping it or you feel like you need to give it, or maybe they've been on it. This doesn't harm them to go on it to support them. But Silly Marin, so milk thistle, um, what's really nice is they did a study. They combined it with metronidazole to treat Giardia. So this is done in another study. And the dogs, remember those side effects of metronidazole are decreased appetite, intermittent vomiting, like you know, diarrhea, all the things. They don't feel good. So when they took this milk thistle, this antioxidant that supports the liver health helps open up those detox pathways. So most likely these, these animals, these dogs are processing the drug better. So they're not getting as toxic and as inflamed. They found that they had better appetite, less vomiting, less weight loss than when they received the metronidazole alone. So if we have to give drugs, and this is a common thing with a lot of drugs, we can use other nutraceuticals or supplements and foods alongside them to reduce the amount of side effects and help our pets process this so much better. I use this all the time when I'm treating like cancer patients or if they're going through chemotherapy to help them so they feel better as they go through it. And we're using a drug and using something that's toxic to the body. And then also too, this is a common one that I recommend all the time. And I've seen it mentioned a couple of times in the comments with everyone is using that beneficial yeast, Saccharomyces boulardii. Adding that can reduce the risk of antibiotic associated diarrhea. So we can use this alongside those antibiotics. So let's say you need an antibiotic for a skin infection, like your pet has dermatitis and they have allergies and they need to go on that. We can add this in and it's going to re minimize the risk of them developing diarrhea because that drug is wiping out everything. So that's really, really nice. It helps benefit um, the ben it's good for the beneficial gut bacteria. So those are a couple of studies just to showcase the power of natural things versus just using drugs. Now I want to touch on before I jump to the alternatives to metronidazole that are great natural remedies that you can use of when we should not use metronidazole. And so many pets are on metronidazole because of the first one, Giardia. Now Giardia, we should not be using metronidazole anymore. Like, yeah, maybe it worked in the past. However, the problem now is that we have tons of resistance to metronidazole. So it doesn't work. So a lot of times, and I saw this too years ago when I was still using this drug and now I know a better way. Um, but I see a lot of my colleagues still using this. I have a lot of patients come to me because it's not working. They're still, they can't get rid of the giardia. They can't get rid of the diarrhea. And it's because it doesn't work anymore. And that's a big that's a huge concern that we have right now because antibiotics are overprescribed and we end up with resistance. I've seen pets with antibiotic resistant strains of bacteria where like they've never had antibiotics, like young animals and they have antibiotic resistant like UTIs, urinary tract infections. This is a huge risk. So back it. So once again, this is not me just saying this, we have studies to prove this. So in 2020, there was a study done in an advanced parasitology journal, and this showed actually that cysteine modifying agents, so stay with me for a second, so things like allicin, where does allicin come from? 
comes from crushed garlic. Yes, garlic is safe for your pets in appropriate amounts. So they found that some of these other natural remedies like garlic and things like prop propolis, lactoferrin. So we're thinking like, okay, think elements coming from colostrum. Other pro propolis we use for a lot of like helping the immune system. Um, you know, it's a bee product. They actually worked better than metronidazole to resolve the giardia. So these studies are showing this, like we have these natural remedies. They're just not known. They're not being prescribed because, hey, wait, why would we? Like a pharmaceutical company is not going to promote that, right? There's no money in that, of course. You can't trademark that. So keep that in mind. When, if your pet, your dog, especially gets diagnosed with Giardia, you have alternatives. We've healed Giardia. Plenty of members in my community where we've healed Giardia. We also make sure another thing with Giardia is if your pet does, if you're testing a stool sample just as like a routine wellness and it's formed and they come up positive on the SNAP test, it doesn't mean necessarily that they're battling that infection. We want to make sure they look under the microscope or send in that stool sample to the lab to see Giardia cysts. We need to see the cysts because it could just indicate that they had exposure. And if a lot of times what happens is, is it'll come up positive and I'll have colleagues that will prescribe the GR or they'll prescribe metronidazole. And then we just created a bigger problem. So we don't want to go down that, that path, right? We don't want to destroy our microbiome and then spend years and years potentially having to build up that gut health again. So now the other time not to use metronidazole is IBD, inflammatory bowel disease. So a study in 2010 actually showed that adding metronidazole to the treatment protocol was no more effective than using steroids alone. So I'm talking about just conventional treatment here. And a lot of times these pets will be on steroids, some type of steroid, um, prednisone, uh, prednisolone, uh, budesonide is a more local acting steroid. And that's to calm down the inflammation, calm down an overactive immune system because IBD is an autoimmune disease. So a lot of these pets are on metronidazole. So if we think about this, we're already struggling in the microbiome gut health area when we have an autoimmune disease attacking the gut. And so if we're putting and adding on metronidazole, we're just making the matter even worse, right? And potentially creating even more side effects for these animals. They're already going to potentially have appetite issues, nausea, vomiting, and then we're adding a drug that's going to have those side effects potentially too. And we make things worse. We make it so much harder to heal them. And we have studies that show this. So have that conversation with your veterinarian, but also to take a look at some of these natural remedies if you're not using them already to calm things down, calm down inflammation, you know, modulate that immune system. There's ways to naturally treat autoimmune disease. And so keep that in mind. We don't want to be reaching for metronidazole for that situation. Now, the other thing too is acute diarrhea. So I see Nasley, yep, hemorrhagic diarrhea. No. No metronidazole. We can we can clear it up with natural remedies. And it's scary though. It is scary when you are seeing blood coming out of your pet's back end, right? And of course, take them to the vet, get them checked out. But this is where having some of the natural remedies we're going to talk about next, have them in your house, be ready, have that emergency kit. Because I can tell you right now, every single one of us, including veterinarians, if our pets experience diarrhea, it's usually over the weekend overnight or on a holiday when the vet clinic is closed and you have to go to the ER. And the next thing you know, you have a $3,000 vet bill. And most of the time, not always, but most of the time, if we start doing some of these things to help your pets when they are having bloody diarrhea or showing those first symptoms, we can help calm it down and get them back into a stable state. So you don't have to go to the ER. We have a blog post and a video also at the naturalpetdoctor.com on how to support your dogs with bloody diarrhea. So make sure you check that out. But with acute diarrhea, here's the thing. There's very little evidence that it actually helps with acute nonspecific diarrhea. Now you're thinking, well, okay, well, wait a second, Dr. Katie. Like we give the drug, they resolve the diarrhea like within like a day or two. It works pretty quick, right? Here's the thing. There is some evidence that metronidazole will reduce the time it takes for acute diarrhea to resolve. But the, another study in dogs found that this reduction amounted to only a couple of days. 
And here's the other thing. In that same study, those authors also pointed out that most cases of diarrhea in dogs actually resolve on their own in a few days, regardless of what treatment you use. It's like humans, right? I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty sure every one of us has probably had diarrhea at some point, right? There's numerous causes, numerous reasons. Sometimes you just never know. Could be food, could be parasites, could be stress, could be autoimmune disease. Most of the time, we're not running to the doctor to get like supportive care. We can manage it. We, you know, use a bland diet. We don't want to eat as much. We fast. You know, sometimes you'll take some conventional medications, but some of the supplements I'm going to mention, you can use for yourself too. So if we think, looking at this, there was another study that looked at treating acute diarrhea in dogs, found no significant difference between giving metronidazole and a placebo. So they actually concluded that the use of metronidazole for such cases should be discouraged until evidence-based data demonstrate a difference in treatment outcome. So it's study after study. So just because something seems to work doesn't always mean that it's causing that to work, right? It's not causing the resolution of the diarrhea. It may have happened regardless, but now what's happening when we use that drug, we are actually setting ourselves back by at least four weeks. There's other studies that indicate months and possibly years. So we don't want to get on that treadmill of going back and forth to the vet clinic or creating health issues down the road. So let's talk about some alternatives to metronidazole. Food is medicine. It truly is. It can be the safest form of medicine or the slowest form of poison. This is where if you have a pet that keeps getting diarrhea um, or they're constantly on metronidazole, we need to assess what food they're feeding. I'm not going to go into depth in this in this talk. Um, we have a lot of other videos that talk about food. We talk about food therapy and the energetics of food too from a Chinese medicine perspective. We go into that in the blueprint program. If you need more information or guidance or need extra support, please reach out to us so we can give you information on how we can best support you. But here's the thing, just like we do for ourselves, like, you know, even just like the old school way, like saltine crackers, right? Soda water, I think it was, I don't know, but bland, bland diets, bland cooked diets. I don't recommend rice because a lot of pets, especially I treat a lot of pets on raw food diets that have lower carbohydrates, that rice can irritate the gut even more because it's really starchy, high carb. I recommend things like getting sweet potatoes or can having canned pumpkin on hand and lightly cooking some white fish or some bland turkey. Um, and just gently cooking it or boiling it, low fat, bland, smaller meals, fast, right? For dogs, we can usually do a six hour fast, rest that gut, allow it to calm down, allow that inflammation to get out and to clear itself. You can also use bone broth. Bone broth is rich in glycine and collagen. It helps soothe and heal leaky gut and an inflamed gut lining. So combining those together to give to your dog when they have diarrhea and feeding less, spacing it apart further, and then slowly working your way back up to their normal diet. Food is medicine. And that alone can help and resolve a lot of like acute cases of diarrhea. Now, when we have diarrhea, we know there's a dysbiosis. We know a lot of times there's going to be an overgrowth of like clostridium or this is why when you test, like your vet will see like, oh my God, they're testing positive for clostridium. I'm like, well, of course, like, you know, this is, these are the bacteria that release a lot of inflammation and toxins and inflame that gut lining. And so we want to use prebiotic foods. These are going to be things like your inulin, you get easy source psyllium husk having psyllium husk on hand. So what it does, a prebiotic is feeding the good bacteria and it's also firming up the stool. So have that on hand. Emergency kit, psyllium husk, human stuff is just fine. Just make sure it's not flavored, doesn't have xylitol, just get the plain brown flaky stuff. The other thing too is that there's certain types of foods. So if we're feeding a bland diet, then we can start slowly adding in some of these really good functional superfoods that also act as prebiotics. These are going to be things like mushrooms, chicory root, dandelion greens. These are all really helpful prebiotics in whole food form. The big thing with these is that 
what I do with like mushrooms, you want to lightly cook them. Um, your dandelion greens, you can steam them. So you're preserving those nutrients. It's making it easier to break them down and digest them. We want to keep things as easy as possible to break down. Okay. Now, one of my other favorite things for this is slippery elm. It is like the best go-to. You can find the human source. Like just use a human source, go to like a human pharmacy, get your slippery elm powder capsules doesn't matter. If you get powder, you can do a quarter teaspoon powder for every 10 pounds body weight. That's really, really helpful because what it is, it's a mucilage. So it's kind of slimy. Like if you've ever had slippery elm, but it's going to coat that gut lining. It's going to reduce inflammation and it's very soothing and will help heal. It also has some prebiotic properties too, to feed those good beneficial bacteria. So definitely have that on hand, your slippery elm, your psyllium husk too, right there. Okay. You could also use marshmallow root. It's a stronger mucilage. So more like, like slippery, it coats, it, it creates a thicker coating. Um, so if you want to use marshmallow root, fantastic. You know, we have marshmallow root on hand because I offer that as self-selection to my cats. We also make teas with it. Um, but that's a great one. You know, Animal Essentials is a great brand that also has slippery elm and marshmallow root and a glycerin tincture. And you could just follow the dosing on the label for that. The other herb that's amazing for bloody diarrhea um, is coptis. So coptis is a very cooling herb that works for when we're talking about Chinese medicine for damp heat conditions. Damp heat is going to be that stinky, smelly, mucusy, bloody diarrhea. And coptis is meant to be used for like three to five days because it's so cooling. But it is amazing at resolving bloody diarrhea and also reducing like clostridial overgrowth. So working on things like C. diff that can occur because it's rich in what we call berberin. And berberin has a lot of antibacterial natural properties, not going to take out the entire microbiome. And we can use that instead of metronidazole. So I 100% recommend having some of the coptis on hand. I know Dr. Judy Morgan, who's an amazing colleague of mine and friend, she has Coptis tea pills at her store at drjudymorgan.com, I believe it is. If you look her up, I'm sure most people know who she is, but she sells them also. So I recommend getting some of that to have on hand because here's the thing. It's better to be prepared than to be stuck in a situation where you're going to the ER and then you're stuck with a situation where you go oh my God, the only option they have for me is the conventional one of metronidazole. So have these things on hand because you never know when diarrhea is going to happen. And all of the things that we talked about are safe to use. Keep in mind, Coptis is meant to be used short term just because it's very cooling. So we don't want to use it too long because the digestive tract from Chinese medicine perspective doesn't like to be cold for a long time. We need it a little warm. It's going to, you know, the cooking pot, breaking down the food. Um, so those are a couple tips, tricks, and also information and research to share with your veterinarian because there are research articles showcasing that metronidazole is not, should not be the number one go-to for things like IBD, for Giardia, even for acute diarrhea. We should be using these great, safe nutraceuticals and whole food options that are going to help nourish and heal that microbiome and the gut health and naturally reduce inflammation so that your pet doesn't get wrecked for the next few years. And then you're trying to build them up and get them back to optimal health. So I hope you guys found that helpful today. Make sure you check out our other videos on our YouTube channel. Like I mentioned, we have, we did a live a couple weeks ago on bloody diarrhea too. So I talk a bit more about that and have some additional resources for some of those supplements. Um, if you have any questions about that, feel free to drop us a message. Uh, you can always email us at info at the natural pet doctor.com. If you're feeling frustrated, you can't figure out why your pet's not getting better. We have some amazing online programs that support you and guide you and educate you to understand the why but most importantly, to help you feel confident that you're getting to the root and balance to truly heal your pet's condition through using fresh food options, food therapy, Chinese herbs, and natural remedies. So thank you so much for your time today. I hope you all have a great day. I will see you guys in a couple weeks time for our next coffee talk. We're going to be taking a little bit of a break for some travel, um, but I'm Dr. Katie Woodley, the natural pet doctor. And until then, I'll see you guys later.